In Sunday school, we teach the little children. If you want to have joy, 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 joy down in your heart. What? J-O-Y. Jesus, others, yourself. That's the order. But real joy will just be putting Jesus first and others and forget yourself. You see, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus means the life of the Godhead is the kind of life God wants to give you, has given you, and that's what He wants living out through you for His glory. So that life sets you free from the law of sin and death. Now, that law of sin and death, we talked about that last time. The way you're set free from the law of sin and death is through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary. That's what Romans 6 says. Romans 6 told you that because you're in Christ, you remember, we start out, we're in Adam. And in Adam, all die. But in Christ, all are made alive. So what we need to do is get out of Adam into Christ. And the way you do that is by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Don't you know Romans 6 says as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. We're buried with him by baptism into death. We're raised to walk in newness of life. We're placed by the one divine baptism of the Spirit of God. We're taken out of Adam. And that's why I've said to you every time we've talked about that, don't you let anybody add one molecule of water to the baptism in Romans 6. When they do it, they cut your spiritual juggler. Anybody that puts water in Romans chapter 6 is an opponent, an enemy of the cross work of Jesus Christ and an enemy and a perverter of the grace of God. I've told you every time I've said that to you, the, I'm not trying to be offensive to you. I realize that's a hard statement. It's not harsh. It's hard. It's hard because the Bible, though it's easy to understand, it's hard to believe. The only offense that I ever want you to get from this program is the offense of the cross. I don't want to be offensive. I don't want anything else to be offensive. If the cross is offensive because it says Jesus Christ is everything and everybody else and everything else is nothing, then so be it. If you're offended by that, that's okay with me. Be offended. But be offended because of the cross. But folks, don't let somebody... You can read this. It's easy to understand. Romans 6, 3. Know you not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ. That's not been baptized into water. You have to twist the verse into a denominational doctrine. You say, but my religious tradition, I don't care. You can believe your religious tradition. Just don't say you believe in Romans 6, 3 when you do it. You say, well, Brother Rick, why? Because I can read and so can you. That dog won't hunt. I not got the nose to make, that, make it through that chapter that way. Romans 6, 3 Know you not that as many of us are baptized into Jesus Christ and baptized into his death. We're dead to sin. We're alive unto God. That's where we are. Now, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. The law system, the performance-based acceptance program is over here. The gift program is over here. As many as are led by the Spirit of God will not function under that system over there. They're going to function under this system. Galatians chapter 5, verse 18. See, there is a, there is a, a, an objective standard that God gives you to judge where you are spiritually. Put away sin by the sacrifice of himself raised to walk in newness of life. We live in the identity that God gives us over here. We live in it by faith. And then we apply that to the details of our life as we walk in obedience to God's Word. I told you last time, when you sin, you're going to respond to sin. If you respond with the law, what do you do? You respond by trying to do better, by trying to perform again, 
And what's that going to do? That's going to just bring more failure. Under grace, if you sin, you're going to respond to that sin. How? By, by living in the by faith, looking at it and living in the identity that God gives you in Christ. And what does that tell you? He's put away sin. So what are you going to do with the sin you see in your life? You're going to say, that's the sin that Christ died for. Denying ungodliness and worldly. Here's what the cross teaches. The grace of God brings salvation, has appeared unto, unto, unto all men, teaching us. What does the cross teach you? That denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should what? Live. Denying. That is not who I am anymore. This is who I am. And I should live in the identity God has given me in His Son. Well, that's Romans 8. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When he says, I live by the faith of the Son of God, Jesus Christ lived a life of dependence upon his Father's word to him. When he's in the garden, he, he looks at that cup and he says, Father, nevertheless not my will, but thine be done. That's why Paul could say, that he was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He went there in obedience to the Father's will. Depending on the Father and His Word and His plan, you and I are to live the same way. We're to live in complete, total dependence on God's Word to us. On the fact that this is who we really are and how God relates to us. We really are totally forgiven. He really has put away our sin by the sacrifice of himself. He really does live in us. You know what that means about sin? That means sin is a total waste of your time. The sin that crucified your Savior to be active in your life today is a total waste of your time. Whether it's adultery, sexual immorality, whether it's drunkenness or addictions to, to, to uh, uh, chemical substance. Whether it's anger, bitterness, wrath, whether it's religion, whether it's the good works you try to do to make God and others accept you, all of that is a total waste of your time. Because it's you. And you see, what you depend on is what's going to control your life. If you'll get in God's Word, that's why we're here every week. And appreciate who God has made you in His Son. Not just jumping around jitterbug Jesus and oh how I love Jesus stuff. I'm talking about get into the facts of God's Word about who He's made you in Christ. Who you are as a member of the body of Christ. Understand what God's doing today. Know what He's doing. What the great cosmic plan that He has for His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The cosmic plan in the universe and how we fit into that as members of the body of Christ. If you'll get into that. Get that into your understanding. Let that truth live in your life. Take your stand on that as being what's real. You'll not only understand where you are in the program of God, you'll begin to see the, the truth of God's Word work in the details of your life. Because if you want to do the will of God in your life, just figure out, find out from God's Word what He's doing, and then by faith do that. And you'll be doing it. And you'll see the transforming of your life. Not because you put on a bunch of rules and regulations, but you'll not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind to think like God thinks about the details of your life. And you'll be motivated by the love of Christ to you, by the life that Jesus Christ gave you, that God gave you in His Son, and His great love, His great mercy, and His grace to you that's abundant and free. I want that joy for you, that victory for you. That's why we're here each week. We'll see you again next time as we meet again here on the air or in the air. Till then, Maranatha.